वेलकम ऑल टू लॉ सीखो थरो न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस फॉर ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री now starting with the today's agenda of the day we'll be talking about the editorial section which is based upon what is affidavit what is approver and what mahua and hirandaris are talking about which we have taken from the indian express then we'll be uh, we'll be talking about some news update that is that will include the national news international news important days awards and sports and lastly we'll be discussing some legal news update which is coming from the honorable supreme court and the high court of different states in india now let us start with the editorial section first now let us discuss why we are talking about this particular contextual uh, editorial related to affidavit and approval so darshan hirandani who is the ceo of hirandani group has given a sworn affidavit to the ethics committee of lok sabha making a serious allegations against the tmc mp mahua moitra and several other individuals so the particular industrialist has given a affidavit of giving a serious allegations against the lok sabha mp uh, who is mahua moitra now moitra rejected this particular contents of the uh, sworn affidavit and said that uh, and what she said was hirandani's approver affidavit on a white piece of paper with no letter head so ultimately she rejected all the contents and said uh, that it was an hirandani's approver affidavit on a white piece of paper with no letter head now here comes the question that who is an approver so we'll be discussing about this particular technical term that who is an approver and what is this term mean in the legal sense now lawyers strudelstroff and pallavi shroff who hirandani is alleged were feeding moitra with all kinds of unverified information pointed out that hirandani's statement were not made on oath or verified before an oath commissioner so they particularly targeted the they particularly targeted the technical terms or the technicalities of the particular affidavit that the affidavit was not uh, made on oath or verified before an oath commissioner now what is a sworn affidavit now let us discuss uh, when hirandani filed a sworn affidavit what they termed as so the public service or a non profit legal information institute of the cornell law school says an affidavit is a sworn statement a person makes before a notary or an officer of the court outside of the court asserting that certain facts are true to the best of that person's knowledge so uh, this particular uh, in the indian legislative sense is defined under indian general clauses act 1897 in section 3 where affidavit is defined as an affirmation and declaration in the case of persons by law allowed to affirm or declare instead of swearing so they affirm and declare that the, this particular facts are true to the best of that person's knowledge okay now uh, there is some judicial proceedings as well and the judicial judgments also linked in this particular case in the ruling of chhoten prasad singh versus hari dusad in 1977 a three judge bench of the honorable supreme court said it is an essential characteristic of an affidavit that it should be made on oath or affirmation before a person having authority to administer the oath or affirmation so the definition has been uh, taken from the indian clauses act first we have an international definition which is coming from the cornell law school and then we have a judicial judgment based on this particular definition now now can anyone make an affidavit at any point of time so is that so that anybody can make an affidavit so in chhoten prasad singh case which was a ruling of 1977 it made it clear that all courts and persons having by law or consent of parties so all courts and persons having by law or consent of party the authority to receive evidence are authorized to administer such oath and affirmation but they can only do so where they are otherwise acting in discharge of duties or in exercise of powers imposed or confirmed upon them by law 
So the particular the particular answer to this question is coming from Chhotan Prasad Singh, which was held in 1977 ruling. Additionally, the court also observed that only those magistrates who were acting in the course of their duty could administer oaths and affirmation to the persons making the affidavit and failure to meet this requirement would render the affidavit as inadmissible evidence. So what, uh, so, no, so if the requirement are not fulfilled according to the law and according to the judicial proceedings that, that are uh, happened in this particular case, uh, the requirement would render the affidavit as inadmissible evidence. That means that cannot be taken as an admissible evidence before the court of law. Affidavits are routinely made in the course of legal proceedings or trial. They can also be made for other purposes, such as registry, registering one property or declaring one legal heir. Now, now the term came when Moitra rejected all the claims of the Hirindanis that it's an approver affidavit. So let us understand who is an approver. So approver is a person who is directly or indirectly concerned, involved, privy to an offence. And a compliance or an or an accuse in a case can later turn approver. Why, why he will turn an approver? Siding with the prosecution and return of a lesser sentence or a pardon. So in a layman language, approver means any person who has done directly or indirectly any crime or is involved in offense. And later he can turn an a compliance uh, so that he can help the prosecution in return of the lesser sentence or pardon. This particular term is explained under section 306 of the CRPC, um, uh, which states that for tender of pardon for an compliance in a crime on condition of his making a full and true disclosure of the whole of the circumstances of the offence within his knowledge relative to the offence. Now, there is no legal definition of an approver affidavit by the expression Moitra said that there is no term which is called as approver affidavit in the legislative sense or we don't have any definition in any law book. But the interpretation that we can take is from the different definitions uh, from the, you know, CRPC. So this was all about who is an approver affidavit, what is a sworn affidavit, whether it can be made by whom and at what period of time. So this is a particular case which defines, which tells what is an affidavit and how it should be made. I hope I'm clear on this particular editorial. Now, let us discuss the national news of the day. Indian chess grandmaster Karthikian Murali beats world number one Magnus Carlsen in Qatar Masters. So in Qatar's Masters, a 24-year Indian chess grandmaster Karthikeyan Murali became the third Indian player to be the world's number one player, Magnus Carlsen, in classical chess. So with a significant trump, he joined the rank of the other leading players such as S.N. Narayan, Jovki Sindorov, David Parvin, Arjun Irigesia and Nordervik Yakubo, all of whom held a remarkable score of 5.5 out of 7. Now, there are very notable chess-related development in the recent past. The Indian men and women chess team won silver medal at an Asian Games. GM Harika uh, Dronawali, I am Vishali Ramesh Babu, I am Vantika Agrawal and WGM Savita Shribhaskar all won their games in a dominating fashion to beat South Korea by 4-0 in the final round to finish with 15 match point. Now, August 24, world number one Magnus Carlsen defeated India's grandmaster R. Pragananda to clinch the title of the International Chess Federation World Cup in Baku as Bairbaijan. So, this is all about the national news coming in the sports, uh, which is chess. Now, Military Heritage Festival. Uh, um, you know, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on Saturday inaugurated the Indian Military Heritage Festival at Manik Shaw Center in New Delhi. The Indian Military Heritage Festival is a two-day event that got underway in the national capital on October 21st. Now, what is this particular festival is aimed at? Particular festival is aimed at 
to celebrate India's rich military culture and heritage that has evolved over the centuries through conversations, art, dance, drama, storytelling and exhibitions. It primarily brought forward different understandings and perspective through panel discussions by eminent scholars, practitioners and serving well as retired officers. Now, uh, during this event, the Defense Minister also launched Project Udbhav, a joint collaboration of Indian Army and United Service Institution of India to promote indigenous discourse through exploration and integration of the country's ancient strategic acumen into its contemporary military domain. So in this particular festival, it is a two-day festival which happened in the national capital. According to the, uh, uh, like with the festival, Defense Minister also launched Project Udbhav. Now, the next national news, Andhra government to begin BC cars, that is backward classes cars, census around 15th of November. So Andhra Pradesh government will begin backward classes car census around 15th November aimed at better serving the 139 communities which fall under this category. Now, the backward classes welfare minister noted that the government will extensively deploy the village secretariat system for the caste census. The state government has decided to go ahead with the backward classes caste census, which will comprehensively enumerate backward classes region-wise, profession-wise, and under other parameters such as socio-economic st status in the state. So, like Bihar, which is which has come up for the caste census, Rajasthan, which is going for caste census. Now, Andhra Pradesh will begin the backward class census around November fifteenth. Army's Vajra Corps conduct mock excise on CBRN disaster management. Army has conducted a two-day excise at its Jalandhar cantonment on managing chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear disasters. Now, what excise Vajra Corps means? Excise Vajra Saheta, a chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear disaster management excise was conducted by Vajra Corps under the aegis of Western Command Headquarters on October 16th and 17th. The exercise provided an opportunity for the Army to showcase its reaction and mitigation mechanism in concert with NDRF and civil administration during such deadly disasters. So this particular exercise is a very good exercise which covers the you know, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear disaster management activities also. Chale? Next national news, first ever Indian biennial to be held at the British era barracks of Delhi's Red Fort. So India's artistic and architectural past will be showcased in December at the Delhi Fort in Delhi. You know, the inaugural India art, architecture and design uh, biennial to be held from December 9 to 15 will feature seven specially curated thematic displays located in three British era barracks on the ground of Mughal era monument according to what official sources told PTI. The following themes will be preserving old age tradition and regional identities, promoting sustainable practice with events on the final day recognizing the contribution of women in the field of architecture and design and celebrating the brilliance and creativity of such women. So it's a first ever Indian biennial to be held at British era barracks at Delhi Red Fort. Chalta have important days ki taraf, International Stuttering Awareness Day. So it's a stammering awareness day that falls on October 22nd. The theme for International Stammering Awareness Day this year is one size does not fit for all. Now, what this history comes into picture. So, the self-help uh, groups began to emerge in the mid of 20th century when people who stuttered, that is stammered, came together to support each other, share their experiences and raise awareness about stammering. 
Now, later in 1995, the International Stammering Association was founded by a group of individuals and organization dedicated to promoting awareness and understanding of stammering and to serve as an umbrella organization for various stammering support groups and associations around the world. In 1998, this particular day was officially launched, that is International Stammering Awareness Day, setting the date as October 22nd to coincide with the birthday of the famous English author and playwright Sir George Bernard Shaw, who also stammered. So on, on the, you know, uh, on this famous uh, English author and copyright birthday, Sir George Bernard Shaw, this particular day is dedicated on October 22nd and compassing the theme as one size does not fit for all. Now, the Supreme Court uh, gave direction issued by Supreme Court for speedy trial of civil cases. Uh, this was held in the case of Yashpal Jain versus Tushila Devi and others. Expressing senior concerns at the pendency of cases in the country, the Supreme Court issued a slew of directions to ensure speedy disposal of cases. The 12 directions issued by the bench of Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Arvind Kumar to High Court for ensuring speedy trial and to monitor the disposal of cases are as follows. Now, first, all the district and taluka level shall ensure that written statement is filed within a prescribed limit, namely as prescribed under Order 8, Rule 1, and preferably within 30 days, and to assign reasons in writing as to why the time limit has to be extended beyond the 30 days. In the event of the party's failure to offer ADR, namely resolution of dispute as prescribed under Section 89, the court should frame the issues for its determination within one week, preferably in the open court. Now, fixing of the date of the trial shall be in consultation with the learned advocate appearing for the parties to enable them to adjust their calendar. Once the date of trial is fixed, the trial should proceed accordingly to the extent possible on day-to-day -day basis. So these are the few directions which are being issued by the Honorable Supreme Court for the speedy uh, trial of civil cases. And this particular case name is Yashpal Jain versus Tushila Devi and others. Now, the 12 guidelines, we are continuing further. The, all the council representing the party may be enlightened of the provisions of Order 11 and Order 12, so as to narrow down the scope of dispute. And it should be also the uh, wondrous responsibility of the Bar Association and Bar Council to have periodical refresher courses and preferably by virtual mode. At the conclusion of trial, the oral argument shall be heard immediately and continuously and judgment be pronounced within a stipulated period under Order 20 of CPC. So, so the particular guidelines are related to the timely filing of the return statement, the timely filing of the submissions, the, now uh, the time period to be adhered for, uh, you know, giving the judgment. The committees so constituted by the Honorable Chief Justice of the respective states shall meet at least once in two months and direct such corrective measures to be taken by concerned court as deemed fit and shall also monitor the old cases, preferably which are pending for more than five years constantly. So these are the particular, case, particular directions. These are 12 in number. You can read in this particular both the slides which have been directed by the Honorable Supreme Court for speedy disposal of cases in, uh, you know, speedy trial of civil cases. Now, that's all for the today's news update and the legal news. Thank you for watching and take care.